What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and today we're doing a little coastal foraging and we are going after some uni. So this would be the first time I'm going for a sea urchin uh, this season, I suppose. <clears throat> I say this season, although sea urchin, you can harvest them year long, uh, any time of the year, there's no limitations. But I say that it's the season because usually in the springtime, early summer, the yield inside the urchin is not so great. I'm not expecting the yield to be amazing, but I think we can get a good enough yield so we can have a little meal with them. Right below me here, there are a ton of sea urchin, as you can see right here. There's some nice ones in there. There's some good ones in here. Look at that one. That's a nice one right there. So the areas where you absolutely want to look for these sea urchin are these flat, sort of rocky areas. And that's where you're going to find the sea urchin is the rocky area during a negative tide. Again, negative tide today is a negative 1.0. I'll leave a link in the description below for the tide chart that I use. It's a really good chart. Uh, it's really easy to read. So check it out. All right. And you can look through it for the whole entire year so you know when the low tides are coming up, okay? In California, we mainly have two species of sea urchin, the purple urchin and the red urchin. So the red urchin, just watching the waves here, the red urchin are not the problem, it's the purple urchin that are the problem. In fact, the red urchin are also suffering because of the purple urchin. And if you want to compare differences, the red urchin is what you get if you order Santa Barbara uni or things like that at a restaurant. So if you order Santa Barbara uni or Mendocino uni or things like that, if you see local uni in a restaurant, that's what you're getting. You're getting the red urchin and not the purple urchin. Um, you would expect uni to be really cheap in a restaurant because there's so many. We have so many on the coastline, like I said. But it's because the red urchin are the ones that are commercialized the most. The purple urchin 
for some reason haven't been commercialized uh, I don't know for what reason I think it's mainly due to the fact that they're smaller purple urchin are much smaller than red urchin so it's a lot more work to process purple urchin I don't know that might be part of the reason once purple urchins get commercialized I think that uni is going to be much cheaper if restaurants carry local purple urchin so we'll see what happens one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all right ten so i'll just grab ten for now uh since they're not the yield isn't so great yet i'm gonna come back later in the year and then uh harvest some more when the yield is a lot better well we're gonna clean these guys and we're actually gonna smoke them today so that should be very very interesting never had them smoke but i heard a little something about them so let's go back and let's go cook these guys or smoke them so today we're gonna try something that i've never done with sea urchin we're gonna try to smoke them because i heard i was talking to a guy from new zealand named dion and he told me he smokes his sea urchin and he says that they're really good so i'm really curious to seeing how that tastes and he actually has a tv show out there diving for kina kina is sea urchin in new zealand so and he said the way he preps them is that he smokes them in its shell uh, after he cleans it out so i'm going to try that today and we're going to smoke these sea urchin and see how they taste really curious never done that never heard of that before i talked to him so yeah all right dion this one's for you let's try this out and this is the purple urchin variety as i was saying earlier and these are the smaller variety that we have in california this is big for a purple urchin and like the size of my palm that's it but a red urchin can be about this big the way i start is by taking out the mouth this is the mouth of the sea urchin and you can kind of see those uh the, those little teeth there and it's actually pretty they look pretty crazy from the inside once you take them out look at that that's the whole teeth structure that's why that's how they're able to burrow into those rocks because they have teeth like that and there's a lot of liquid in there so I'll just dump that out and I'll start just breaking off the sides like this this one looks really nice actually the colors on this is great and we're gonna do it like this because we're gonna smoke it in the shell so summertime is usually when I first start to harvest sea urchin. Last year was, you know, in the summer wasn't so great. I'm guessing this year isn't going to be so great either. The year before in the summer was, it was re actually really good. The, the uni was filled, but, you know, as the, as the years go on, it seems like it's a little less and less. And that might be due to, um, because the sea urchin are eating up all the kelp and they're not even leaving enough left to eat for themselves so i'm just scraping the scraping the seaweed this is like their digested seaweed or seaweed that they're eating and some membrane as well so i'm just kind of scraping that off and it'll kind of come out come out like that all right once i get to this stage here then i'll just rinse it out in the salt water so i gather some this is all salt water just straight from the ocean i'm just going to rinse them out Take some patience to do this and this is one of the main reasons why sea urchin is so expensive in a restaurant because the time it takes to clean them out perfectly so that you don't see any of these little bits and pieces of seaweed and shells and things like that it's that labor so i'm gonna say that's good right there do they charge you less if it's not as brightly yellow uh, yeah, so there's grades of uni. Uh, they'll grade it based on color and they grade it based, based on firmness as well. So this one, you can probably, it would probably be A grade. And this is, looks really nice. Uh, it's firm and it's pretty much perfect. So this would be A grade, but we'll see another one that will let you know that it's probably not going to be A grade. So all these sea urchin are from the same spot, same area. Look at the variety in yield and in color. See this one. 
sort of a pale yellow color. This one is nice and orange. As well as this one. Very beautiful. Now this one is a darker orange. Which is nice too. But the yield is very small. Look at this one. Almost no yield. And really brown. That one's pretty dark. But the yield is good. This one. The yield. Eh. So so. And the color is. It's okay too. I used to say that. If you get one uni from a spot, and if that one's good, then all the uni are going to be good from that spot. But you, this is evidence that all not they're not all going to be good, or they're not all going to be bad from one spot. It just really depends on the on the sea urchin itself. So I'm going to consolidate some of these and maybe use just five shells on the grill. I do like them when they're this orange. Really, really pretty. This is how a lot of the uni looks like, the ones from Hokkaido. We're gonna sort of let this burn off, and I have this, the wood chips that were soaked in salt water, and we're gonna put these on top, and that should create nice smoke. And I'm gonna cover the whole thing with uh, foil. Just hot coals, so now I'm gonna dump my soaked wood chips right on there. And that should create some nice smoke. Put the grill on. And I'm gonna put the sea urchin on this side. Just away from the heat a little. And I know Dion, he told me that uh, he adds water, some salt water inside the shell. I think that's so it doesn't dry out. So there you go. We got it nice and smoky. I'm gonna just cover it up. It would be a lot more ideal if I had a nice lid, but just have to make do with what I got. There you go. I want all the smoke to be coming out of this side. And that means that it's getting nice circulation, all the smoke right there. So that's where all the uni is. So that should be good. I think I'll leave that for about maybe 30, 40 minutes, something like that. I think that'll work. It's been a little longer than half an hour and I replaced the wood chips as they the smoke died down so it kept smoking. Uh, so now we're gonna check them. Let's see how they turned out. Whoa! Whoa! All the water evaporated. Might have gone too hot. All right, well, that should be really smoky then. This one got a little, might have got a little dried out. Actually, you know what? Let me just taste one by itself without the bread. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! That taste, that reminds me of smoked salmon and the aftertaste, you get that classic kind of uni flavor. Whoa, tr Jocelyn, try that. Try that. I think you actually might like this. You can take it with the bread too. Here, give it to me. You're right. In the first bite, very salmony. <laughs> right? You get mm -hmm. you get like that smoked salmon flavor. It's good. I like it. All right, there you go. Oh, this is gonna be so good on toast. Oh, for a fact, for a fact, it will be. Wow, wow, literally, I was not expecting this. I wasn't expecting it to taste like that.
That's so good. Wow. And I think in about 30 minutes was perfect. Mmm. Wow, this is actually, actually really good. Dion, my man, that's amazing. Incredibly smoky, but like that smoked salmon smoky. And the, the uni, it still has that creaminess. It's not cooked, it's just smoky. And you still get, it's nice and melty still. And then the aftertaste, you get that delicious uni sweetness. Woo That's incredible. I would recommend that for sure. Dang. If I still worked in the restaurant, man, I'd start doing this. i start doing this and serving this to customers. Because this, oh my goodness. Mmm. Smoked uni. Wow, can you believe that? Can you believe that? It's so good. I actually like it this way better than just raw. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. I would definitely be doing that again and trying to create a dish out of it. Wow, wow, I can't say how surprised I am enough. <laughs> Ooh. Pretty stoked about this one. I'm pretty stoked how it came out. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching as always. Uh, if you learned something, hit the thumbs up. If you liked what I did, hit the thumbs up. Do it anyways. Hit it. Hit that thumbs up either way. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.